The monolith makers. The landing craft settled on the cracked and overgrown tarmac with a heavy thud, kicking up swirls of dust and debris into the hazy sky. Zil Raxavorn extended his sensor tendrils, probing the atmosphere and soil for potential threats as the craft's hatch dilated open. This planet had shown unmistakable signs on long-range scans of having once hosted an intelligent civilization, one far more advanced than its current entropic state would suggest. The opportunity to be the first exploratory team to make landfall filled Zil Raxvorn with an avid curiosity. He led his team of xenoarchaeologists down the ramp and out onto the desolate, crumbling landscape. All around them loomed the husked remains of towering monolithic structures, jutting from the ground and leaning haphazardly like ancient ossified trees. As they approached one of the largest clusters, Zil Raxavorn could make out the faded, two-dimensional markings that crisscrossed the monolith's surfaces. Some form of primitive information repository? queried his lieutenant, Grush Hexelmore, mandibles clicking in fascination. But in such an unwieldy static format? How inefficient! Zil Raxvorn extended a sensor tendril and ran it along the weathered etchings, analyzing their composition. Indeed, it seems the legends of the mythical monolith makers spoke true after all. This civilization had mastered the ability to fossilize data into solid-state obelisks, somehow imprinting it durably into the very molecules. The team fanned out amidst the towering ruins, speculating on the potential treasures contained within each crumbling obelisk's etchings. What grand epics, philosophies, and technical schematics could be locked away in this primitive yet ingenious format? With such basic physical methods for data preservation, who knew what insights into this fallen race they might uncover? Grexelmore brushed aside a tangle of encroaching vegetation to reveal another weathered monolith, this one adorned with an immense gaudy emblem. This edifice appears to have been of particular importance. Perhaps it marked the dwelling of one of their mightiest builders of monoliths. As the team set to work decoding and extracting the fossilized lore from the alien ruins, Zil Raxavorn looked out over the desolate landscape. Antiquated ground cars, their bodies long since rusted and overgrown with dense brambles, choked the remains of broad paved paths between the monolithic structures. The sight called to mind the creeping tendrils of nature gradually subsuming the artifacts of a once mighty civilization. Yes, the enigmatic monolith makers would finally be forced to surrender their secrets. If only these silent stones could speak, what wonders they might disclose. Grexelmore waved him over to a partially collapsed edifice, its smooth obsidian-like facings now cracked and worn by epochs of elemental erosion. Zilraxavorn, I am detecting higher concentrations of fossilized data inscriptions within this structure's interior. As he approached, Zil Raxavorn could make out the faded pigments of crude pictorial representations adorning the outside facade, depicting powerfully built bipedal beings wielding varied primitive tool implements. A series of enclosed block Textacheski ideographics appeared to identify these figures by designated alphanumeric sequences. Some form of lexicon or catalog? Attempt is surficial codeworm decrypt, he instructed his lieutenant. Gur Exelmore nodded, eyes dimming momentarily, as he tasked his nanosymbiotes with the operation. After a few moments, his pupils pulsed wide in surprise. Remarkable. These simplistic logograms appear to represent the individual monolith makers themselves. Their renderings seem to depict members of a working subspecies, sorted by role and function. Intriguing, Zil Raxavorn mused. So this was apparently more than just a monument to anonymous architects. This edifice seemed to memorialize the very individual life forms responsible for its creation in some semblance of a hall of records. Then let us make tributation to their legacy and honor these dead monolith makers as they profane themselves by decrypting and copying all their contained knowledge for posterity. He initiated a full spectral archiving sweep as Grexelmore's team set up portable conversion arrays. Slowly, layer by layer, the indelible archived information was siphoned from the crumbling edifice and streamed into high-density data crystals. Stellar cycles slowly wheeled by as the xenoarchaeologists continued excavating and decoding the monolithic ruins, establishing a temporary habitat amidst the overgrown rubble while they worked. With each layer of embedded data extracted and transcribed, more questions arose about this enigmatic species. 
Fossilized records seem to indicate the monolith makers had been succinctly divided into two distinct working classes. The privileged adeptarchs responsible for abstract tasks of governing and guidance, and the vermin laborers charged with physically executing their designs and retrieving resources. But what larger agenda drove their efforts? What societal ideology cultivated such a rigidly stratified civilization? From painstaking cross-collation, a hazy image materialized of a globally unified civilization that had arisen and systemically emplaced titanic monuments across their world, far beyond any known ancient capabilities. Complex geometric positionings and arcane subterranean mechanisms suggested these obelisks had been intended as components of some unimaginably vast megastructure, one with a seemingly ritualistic or symbolic purpose incomprehensible to the xenoarchaeologist's current understanding. Then approximately half a planetary rotation prior to the present material epoch, all available records abruptly terminated in a terrifying biochemical cataclysm. Massive ambient radiation hotspots were still detectable across the ruins, lingering ghostly mementi of some unrestrained high-energy event. What civilization-rending cataclysm could generate such catastrophic isotopic fallout across an entire planetary atmosphere? As the xenoarchaeologists continued sifting through the fragmentary petroglyphs etched into the monolith surfaces, disturbing implications surfaced about the closing days of this crumbled society. There were contradictory depictions of escalating civil conflict, climatic disruption, and complex biological weaponization. Could the rivalries between these two rigidly stratified laborer castes have finally erupted into open warfare and total societal immolation? The more Zilraxvorn's team decrypted, the more disturbing questions arose. Then, amidst the excavated artifacts recovered from a collapsed archive monastery, one of Grexelmore's dextrochemists made a chilling discovery. A series of scorched and warped crystals encoded with underread biosolution directories, some sort of fail-safe repository that had fortuitously been bypassed, overlooked amidst the cataclysm. As the xenoarchaeologists compiled these interwoven schematics, the full horrifying genius and hubris of the monolith makers unveiled itself at last. In their quest for societal and technological ascendancy, they had sought to harness unimaginable forces and ultimately triggered a genocidal cascade beyond their comprehension. Still, the cataclysm had raged on as the mutating bioagents gained exponential impetus and all attempted firewalls ultimately failed under the sheer viral incursion load. At last, the great Sacramarity protocols had been enacted. Carcosaville Omega Extinction Event Procedures designed to destroy all biological information repositories at any cost. Those final screams of both monstrous and untainted genomes alike had been fossilized alongside the data etchings, echoing across the epochs as silent witness to the civilization's terminal spasms, all because they'd believed their achievements inviolate, their creations untouchable by any cataclysm their vaunted sciences could spawn. Zil Raxavorn shuddered. Horrified awe coursing through his neurofibril matrices as his team synthesized the full-coded autobiography of this forgotten world. How many other such civilizations across the cosmos had fallen victim to their own technological hubris? He activated his comm implant and established an uplink to the orbiting repository ship. This is Xenoarchaeology Expedition Alrax Moore 64F requesting priority offsider from the science's ethereal hub. We have made a discovery of foremost existential importance regarding a now extinct monolith building civilization and their self-inflicted termination event. Amidst the desolate ruins, his sensorium tingled with the haunting algorithms of these petrified dead, whose moldering presence had now slipped back into the continuum after being awakened by outside contact after ions of silence. Perhaps someday their fossil code would be cautionary eons for some other fledgling intelligence, their blueprint for miraculous creation and cataclysmatic destruction affording a dharmic lesson. Though the monolith makers had perished in the throes of their own transcendental overreach, their indelible record remained. And as Zil Raxvorn transmitted the final data packet through the lightning clouds, he knew these moribund progenitors would echo through time immemorial, howling their unuttered warning across the cosmic void to any audience inheritors of their firespawn legacy.